today everyone welcome back to the big rig racing channel it is now the end of school for me so I'm now in school holidays which means I can get a whole bunch of work done on this car if a few few things fall my way um, as you may have seen you got to see a little bit of Townsville before this little show this little uh, episode started um, it is beautiful up here all year round um, it is currently about 35 degrees outside with around a 75% humidity so a little bit steamy a little bit hot um, but that's just life up here in the tropics in North Queensland so this episode we're going to be uh, working on finishing off the dash getting that flocked and set up and all good to go and then um, just running around town now getting a few little things done picking, picking some stuff up ready to uh to go on to some other things that we need to do um on the car uh i had a message from someone asking me why the name big rig racing well it's quite simple um i don't like it's not that i like driving trucks um i'm just six foot ten and i'm trying to fit myself into a car that is probably considered small compared to me and so I find that as a bit of a challenge, so I thought I'll just call it Big Rig Racing. It has a nice little ring, ring to it. And uh, we went about it that way, so there's no real major significance. It's just that I'm tall, trying to fit into a small car, and I like the name Big Rig Racing, so that's that. Um, throughout this episode, I'll just give you a heads up throughout this episode. If I get a phone call and I have to stop the episode and come back to it, it's probably because my wife has gone into labor with our second child so if it's a bit stop start and a bit jumpy all, all over the place probably because my second child is about to be born and I'll need to go to the hospital so thank you to my lovely wife who's supportive of me in doing this and allowing me to build this car and uh, understands that for me working on the car and building it is a bit of downtime for me and I can uh it's my little escape from the world of teaching and um, and the craziness and busyness of what goes on there. So stick around. Uh, if you've never been here before, um, my name's Mitch. Um, I hope you really enjoy this kind of this build and what's going on. If you're one of the new subscribers that has subscribed to the channel, welcome. I'm glad you come along for the journey. Um, it is a little bit different. I'm not in Melbourne, Sydney. Even Brisbane, I'm in North Queensland. I'm probably the only one in North Queensland doing a build up here for the temperatures that I will be experiencing up in this car. Um, I think there's probably only two days a year in towns where it gets cold. The rest of it is quite warm and hot. So I'm dealing with different temperatures in regards to the cooling system, um, things like that. So a bit of a unique build for me. And um, yeah, we'll see where it, this, uh, this goes. So... Again, just running around getting some stuff done before I take off home and get to work on the dash and getting that all sorted out. So, here we go. All right guys, we're back home in the garage now. I've had to shut the door um, because they're actually building new road across the road from me. Um, and it's just way too much noise for this video. So I've closed the door, 
I have brought over a new fan I've affectionately know, called Brutus. It's an industrial size fan right here. Um, it'll blow the teeth out the back of your head when you've got it turned up. So it should keep us nice and cool and uh, keep us going on working on our dashboard. So a few things I want to try and get done today. If you notice, there's a little bit of, I don't know if you can see it, there's a little bit of a hole there. So I'm going to fix that up. Um, a few little things I want to fix up here, but most importantly, all that rust back there on those brackets and down here. I want to try and get all that cleaned up, um, get that taken care of, so then I can flock the dashboard. Hopefully, today, we might be able to get to that. So that's the goal. I am going to fiberglass a bit more through the back of it, um, just to give it a bit more strength, a bit more rigidity. Um, to minimize the risk of more cracks that might be occurring through there. So That's the goal for today. That's what we're going to start working on. So um, Bit of fiberglassing uh, Filling in a few little holes with little imperfections Getting rid of some rust painting up those brackets and then getting onto the flocking Okay, so I just put some more fiberglass in there just to strengthen that part of the underside of the dash so we can try and eliminate the cracks. You can see here, you can see where there's a crack running through there. It's fiberglassed up. It looks like an absolute mess behind this dashboard, but quite frankly, I'm not too fussed because you probably won't see it that often. It's the outside that I'm trying to do up and make sure it looks good for inside the car. Um, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna try and maybe pull this bracket off here hopefully. Um, clean that up a bit and then give it a bit of a paint um, and then get most of the rust off it and then paint it, get it squared away and then once this fiberglass is dried I'll come back and fill up the few little holes that I need to get sorted out and then on the other side of this dash in here where I took the uh, radio cassette player out and things like that and the heater core and the heater and the switches and the buttons I'm gonna make up a panel for that so that's another thing we need to get onto today but right now while all that fiberglass is drying in there I'm gonna try and move move this at least this um, that bracket right there um, I'll leave those ones up there just for the moment because they're supporting the top of the dashboard and then we'll come back to those and get those done shortly but let's get to this part right here cleaned up to what I'd consider an acceptable standard considering what they were at before, which was incredibly rusty. So I'm going to give them a quick shot of uh, black paint, get them all looking much better and ready to put back together.
Okay, we've got this frame and bracket all cleaned up and painted, which I think looks absolutely smashing. I've done these other three brackets across the top there, so they're not looking all rusty either, they're nice and tidy. And I've got this one here, so it's all painted up in a matte black, so it should look good. Um, not, your, not that you'll see it, um, but when I put the cover over this, this area down here, um, you'll see the brackets and stuff like that, so I'd rather have them looking painted and looking nice than looking absolutely rubbish. So the next thing we do, all the fiberglass now is dry along there. Um, it's actually quite stiff there now, so you can't actually really bend it that much, which is great. Um, we'll flip it over, we'll fill in these little holes that we have to do, let that set, and then um, I'll make this, this panel to go in the middle down there. Then we can start getting ready to flock this thing, so it's coming together rather nicely. Alright guys, moving on to the next step, there's a few, whole bunch of different process or steps in this process, so if you look here, I've got the, um, I've just patched up a few different parts that I wasn't quite happy with, and I'll go back and sand those off in a, in a little while, while it, when it's all set and, um, and looks good and hard. While we're waiting, we're going to move on to this part here. So while over this whole spot here, I want to put a a um, I'm going to put a panel in there, and all going well, I'm going to flock the panel as well, just to make sure that it, it all ties in nice and neatly. Um, it screws in two there, and I think you can put two in down there as well. And I'll just have to come up with some space, some sort of spaces for those ones. Um, just to just see how we do with those. I actually might have to do it on all, all six points. But I've got some Alumabond here um, that I'll be using to make our, our little template out. So if you look here, it's it's just the, uh, what do we got? Uh, point, almost one mil, gal oh, sorry, Galvabond. Um, 600 by 300 point uh, by 0.95 Galvabond. And it should be strong enough to make a little plate that goes in the middle and then we'll just drill some holes through it and put that over the top as a bit of a cover and then we'll um, do it now. To get the actual corners right, my dad back in the day was a draftsman. One of the tools they use is a is one of these. It's a, it's a I don't know what you call it, it's a bit of lead inside this plastic thing. And you can do it to make specific curves that you want. So what I'm going to do is I'll just put that around the curve to get the curve I need, like so. Let's push it up in the corner to get the right curve. That'll then hold its shape, and then I can just transfer it straight across onto the um, onto the galva bond, and then I can cut that corner out, and it should, in theory, fit nicely in that in that little um, space, nice and neatly. So. I'm going to make a cardboard cut and cut out first, a little bit of a cardboard template, and then get all the everything right, and then I'll just trace around the template, get all the holes right. Cut, cut only once. Um, I don't want to mess up that galva bond, uh, galva bond when I cut it out. So that's the plan. Uh, let's get started. Okay, so there you have it. We've got our little plate that sits in the middle there and I'll flock that as well to match the, 
The rest of the dash, there's just a little bit of a gap up there, but I'm not too fussed about that. But all in all, it's looking very good. So when it comes to flocking the dash, I'll flock that as well. I've got a few other things I'm gonna flock as well. So it will be hopefully looking pretty awesome by the time we get done with it. So not hard. I will have to find a few spaces in there just to, because there is a bit of play in there. Um, but yeah, all in all, I'm very happy with that. And then I'll, uh, I think it's now time to, oh, it's still a bit tacky, um, get on to sanding the, uh, the extra body filler I put in a dash for the little small holes. Well, the dash is looking good. We're just about to start flocking it, but have a look at what it looks like right now. I've gave, given it a quick, um, coat of spray paint just to get rid of all the light lines in there so it doesn't somewhat show through in the glue if that's what would happen. So it's looking good. I'll give it a start and putting the glue down shortly. Um, but from what I understand you only get a short amount of time, about five to ten minutes to put the glue on then start flocking. So I'll get straight to it, I'll get right into it. Um, getting the glue on and then I'll start flocking. Now th this is the stuff we're using right here. This is a uh, the flocking adhesive, the glue. I've got two of them, I'm not sure if I'll use both of them. And this is the powder right here. Um, I'll put the, uh, I'll put a link for those products down below in the description. Um, they, all, all the gear comes from Timbercon. Um, this is even the applicator that we got um, for the flocking powder. So you just pour it in there and uh, it comes out the bottom. Again, from Timbercon. I'll link it in, this, in the description for you guys if you want to go check it out if this is something you would like to do. Um, we will be doing the dash and the center panel that I've just cut out. And maybe one other thing. We'll see if we get to it and we have enough time. So. Let's get to it, we'll start flocking, um, and we'll see how we go. Okay, there we go, she's all flocked. Looking nice and neat. We'll have to leave it for a good amount of time now overnight. Put it all set and hardened. I've done this piece down here. That's the center panel. And the other panel I did was the plastic surround for the gauge cluster. So I'll see how that turns out. Um, hoping it's gonna look really good. We'll match the um, 
it'll match the, the stuff in there. So I'll have to wait and see. But I'm pretty happy with that actually. Especially, it looks very, very smooth, very nice. So I have to wait in the morning and see how it turns up when we give it a dust off and see how much, see how much I'm um, actually flocking. We actually get off it. So that's it for tonight. I'll catch up with you in the morning when we've come back and this is all dried and hard and we'll see how much actually comes off. See you tomorrow. All right guys, new day. We've just put together, I've just put together back, or back together the dash after being flocked. Am I 100% happy with it? Mm, no. Is it a whole lot better than where it came from or what it was at the start? Absolutely. Now the things I'm not really happy about is when I was flocking it, I left it out just to try and get a bit of air to dry it. And uh, council came past and wanted to mow the lawn. And uh, I got a little bit, just a, if you barely can see it, a little bit of uh, flex of grass in there. But I'm not too fussed about that. Um, gives it a bit of character. What I am stoked about though, is this, uh, the panel that we made there. And then I also flocked the, um, the plastic panel that surrounds the gauge cluster. I'm absolutely stoked with that and how that came out. So all in all, I think it looks absolutely fantastic. Just a few little things I'm not happy about, which, you know, I tend to be a bit of a perfectionist when it comes to these things, but will it serve our purpose of being in the car and keeping the shine off the dash and out of my eyes? Absolutely. Does it look good? Yeah, I think it does. Um, I was like looking back where it came from, um, where it started at, this is 100% better than what I had at the start. I had cracks all through it. It was just, just stuff all over it. And now it's actually looking schmick, um, like it's meant to be in a race car. And it's exactly where it's going. So I'm happy, um, it looks good. Close call, no baby coming just yet. Getting back to this. It's going in a race car, it looks fine, it looks fantastic. Um, again, bit of a perfectionist, so little tiny things just irritate me a little bit, but I get over them after a while. So that'll be going in the car. Um, I'll link the video where we started off with the dashboard and showing where it came from. Um, I'll put that up just up here, I think. And then we will then uh, move on to the next part of our build, which the car is booked in um, early January. I'm taking it into the guys at Cadco Off-Road and they're going to fix the floor pan for me. Um, I could try and do it myself. Simple fact is that these guys do it professionally. I would just be learning on the job and doing probably a hack job. So I'd much rather get them to do it, have it looking good, safe, and they even think about mounting the seat for me, getting that all squared away so I don't have to worry about that as well. So I'll be taking it in there getting that um, taken care of early January. I will be pulling the engine out sometime soon, um, fixing all that up, doing a few things there. So again, dashboard is done. Looks absolutely fantastic. The beautiful thing is if I want to put some gauges in there, I can. This, I'm very happy about that. Um, but yeah, it is looking fantastic. So until next time guys, um, give this video a like. If you haven't already, subscribe, keep up with this build, um, leave a comment and I'll get back to you and I'll see you next time.